Repentance was nominated oh, no. for, it was a, yeah, it went to Action on Film Film Festival in Las Vegas. And we were so excited. We packed, we actually drove all the way there with all of our kids and everything. We drove, yes. That's right. <laughs> and, oh my goodness. All the way from Rhode Island, huh? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Two kids. No. <laughs> uh, and it came, uh, it was nominated for best short film. I was nominated for uh, best lead in a short film. And we met with some really cool people and hey, runner up. Oh, I was runner up. Yeah, runner up. Sorry. Runner up. That's right. Uh, and we uh, met some cool contacts when we were there. Uh, Billy McManera, we met there and we keep in contact periodically and stuff like that. So it was a very good experience and it was a fun film, which we learned what not to do with. <laughs> I want to welcome you to another episode of Media from the Heart. My name is Ruth Hill and I'm your host. And today I have a dynamic duo. I have the absolute honor, joy, and privilege of chatting with a short time ago. It's been a little while now. They've had to wait and I appreciate their patience. In fact, this is interesting jumping back to want to an episode Knowing where I am now, this is an older episode, and I finally have a chance to bring it to you. And Justin Tolliver, Shella Morin, these two are the dynamic duo that make up Soul Injection Studios. And you may never have heard of them, but I tell you, this is an interview, this is a chat, it is a conversation that you are going to want to listen to. These two shared their heart, their passion. They shared their soul with the audience. So please sit back and enjoy Justin and Shella. It is such a joy to have them. And I can hardly wait to hear what you think. Enjoy. Well, I want to welcome all of you to another episode of Media from the Heart. And my name is Ruth Hill. I'm your host. And I have two very, very special guests with me today, as well as a lovely virtual audience. And so I am really excited. I do want to introduce them to you. Um, we have Justin and Shella Tolliver. You, you're Shella, um, I'm sorry. I should have asked you this probably before it started. Do you go by Tolliver or do you go by a different last name? I actually go by Morin, but it's all the same. Really. Thank you. So Justin and Shella, it is so nice to have you. Thank you for being here. So let me officially introduce them to you. Um, so Shella Morin and Justin Tolliver are a dynamic duo that act and create film and episodic projects under the name Soul Injection Studios. Shella has been finishing up her academic journey with a 4.0 in film and media at CCRI touching upon all aspects of production, including script, camera, sound, and editing. While Justin took the hands-on approach, picking up knowledge across a variety of Hollywood film sets that have recently been increasing in New England. Together, they have created several short films, one an action film, Repentance, was a finalist in a few categories at the International Action on Film Festival in Las Vegas last July. Their latest project, DoubleDate.com, is a comedy web series currently streaming on their YouTube channel, Soul Injection, Injection Studios, and is about a couple facing the challenges of finding real friendship later in life as they fluctuate from desperate to please potential friends to self-sabotaging themselves with their impossible standards. The pair aim to hit home with content that was relatable to nearly everyone now that the pandemic has made socializing more difficult than ever yet also hope to take viewers' minds off the downside of that reality with some laughs. To keep talent safe throughout, most of the show was even filmed virtually, and, and Shella and Justin have been the only crew throughout, producing out-of-pocket without a budget of any kind. In the future, the couple, who have two children, plan to continue picking up steam and moving forward towards bigger projects to gain more notice in the industry. When they are not focused on their dream... The family enjoys travel adventures of cross-country road trips, hiking, biking, swimming, and having unforgettable experiences. So that is a very impressive, first of all, to both of you, that is very impressive. I, I love the fact that you are 
I love the fact, first of all, that you were a couple that is doing this together because that is not always seen in the film industry. That um, I, I know it's it might be somewhat common in some circles, but it doesn't always work the way that you two have gotten it to work. Because uh, I, I would like to see more couples like you get involved um, in the film industry. For sure. Yeah, um, we should, yes. <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely. Um, so Justin, I've actually known you. It's, 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 I've, I've known you previously. We've actually done an interview before and that worked out really well. I still remember that quite well. And it was such a joy to find your, that, to know that now you have a better half, Shella. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, and, and that you two have a beautiful family. Um, I was looking through some of the photos that, of all of you together and it just a gorgeous family. And I'm, and so I guess let's start with um, both of you giving just a little background about maybe how you, how you both individually got started in film. I know that Justin, we've kind of had that discussion before, but my viewers may not be familiar with you. So, so Justin, how did you get started in film and TV? Um, I started, well, I'm originally from Wisconsin. Uh, that's when you first interviewed me is when I was based in Kenosha, Wisconsin. And a lot of the work that I did was indie film. I did some extra work and all that to get like a base of acting and knowledge. And the market is good there. It's just not as big as it's blooming here. So um, I have more opportunity here. But in Chicago, I got started with Not Another Zombie Movie, which I was an extra for. And then it was just... It's like a drug acting and performing. And then it's like something you just can't stop. And you just, once you do it, you are like, even through the bad times, it's like, oh man, I didn't get that. I'm, I'm so done. It's just like, but then you yearn for more and you keep going and you keep going. And Shaw, I met Shaw in a, ironically, uh, a Facebook uh, acting group. And then we became uh like just ask she was asking for advice and then I was helping her and then we just kept their conversations going and then I moved here so it was and then my auditioning and all my work jumped like tenfold I'm represented in three different states um one in LA one in southeast and then I have one here in New England so I am regularly auditioning for big time, like very juicy roles, and I'm waiting for my big break. But in the meantime, we do our own content. Like they keep saying, push, 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 don't give up, strive. Uh, we even put our kids in it too. So we're all on the same page. They've been in commercials. Um, they've done our short films. So. Okay, well, that that's awesome. That's that's, a, that's great to hear. So Shola, what I, what what I was really impressed with as I read through this. So you are maintaining a 4.0 as you were, to, you know, J Justin comes in with all the Hollywood ex type experience, all that, that experience. And then you come in where you're actually studying film and you're maintaining a 4.0. So congratulations on that. That is fabulous. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going back to school myself and right now maintaining a 4.0. So I understand. I, I, I totally celebrate you on that. It's, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah, awesome, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Shola, um, so what, what, what has been your path to getting involved with film and TV? Right. So um, film and TV has always been my destination. When I was a kid, that's what I wanted. I was writing scripts in the eighth grade. I had a crappy video camera and I would run around and make my friends act them out. Uh, it was just always a matter of how to get there. I mean, do you go to college? Do you not? Back there was a little, back then it was a little ambiguous about which route you would take. So I didn't really think that was something you would do is go to college. And there wasn't a whole lot of film going on around Boston at the time. And I'm from uh, just south of Boston. So I didn't really know where my opportunities would lie. So uh, I ended up living out west for a little while. And that's where I actually started in Las Vegas with independent film. And that's kind of where I really started getting knowledge about the film industry, how you paved your way. It's kind of catch 22. If you don't have experience, how do you get experience? But you need experience. So I did uh, 
a few of the independent films there. And then I moved back east. And that's when film really started coming back here in a bigger way because of a tax incentive. And I mm -hmm. still was having trouble getting in the door there. So that's when I started talking to Justin, started trying to figure out what I could do. We quickly became friends and whatnot. And I started taking more classes around here. And uh, it wasn't until he got here, though, that we actually started making bigger pushes. Um, and I started getting auditions and whatnot. Um, and I actually, at the time, I was going to school to be a dental hygienist. And that's where I had taken like a million science courses. And <laughs> that's still part of my 4.0, which I think I'm most proud of. But it wasn't what I wanted to do. So it was cool because I could handle like the tough stuff, but it was just like, this is a good career, but it's not what I want. And then at the, like the same exact time as Justin coming here, my school got a film and media program. We have a TV studio down in our, one of our campuses. And so I just like changed gears, no looking back. <laughs> and the second I jumped in, I started editing film, shooting film. It was like seeing all those childhood dreams come to life. When back then I didn't know how I would ever be able to do all this kind of stuff. And suddenly I was in it, I was doing it. And it's just been amazing ever since. So we originally started creating projects to have content as actors that we could show to casting directors and hopefully get called in for auditions. And that's basically how it always started and how it's been going. During the downtimes between not having auditions, we just want to keep creating footage, keep getting our faces and our work out there. And that's kind of how Double Day came along. We didn't really have a lot of comedy footage. We wanted to make comedy footage and it just turned into a series. There you go. Well, yeah. well, I applaud you both because independent film is something that not is not for the fate of heart. I know that. <laughs> it's not something that that everybody is I think when we think of TV and film so often we are looking at all the glamorous uh, red carpet events multi-million dollar Hollywood a-listers and that's what everybody thinks that oh you're an actor that's the way your life is that, that I think that that tends to be what a lot of people I know I used to have that mindset myself I used to think that oh I'll you know you but you acted if you're an actor you have it made and you, you and you you have just everything handed to you but that's but that's not the way it is and so and when it comes to film and tv you are an independent filmmaker you have to do it all i, I mean <laughs> exactly you yes. don't you don't yeah. get you don't get to like uh and, and because you're usually working with a limited or no budget and you're and you have to decide okay i need to learn how to edit the film i need to learn how to shoot the film i need to learn how to do this and, the, and all the different aspects of film that the big name studios hire they pay millions of dollars for other people to do it so that they don't have to and they have all those moving pieces so um so with independent film I understand that that's a great way to get started. I mean, some people look at it, okay, I'm going to get, I'm going to make some content and I'm going to get into independent film and that's going to put my work out there and then I'm going to make it big and all this. And then, you know, some people have that, that idea, but what, what do you really appreciate about the most about working in an independent film? Um, independent, it's more, it's more satisfying because especially for us, we did everything. So it was, of course, it's a lot of work, but at the end of the day, it was a lot more satisfying too, because we knew this was our creation from get from start to finish. Uh, I did all the crew work. I did the cinematography on it. I did the lighting on it because I, uh, learned a lot of experience because I did, uh, it's called space ID. I did a whole run, like the whole month on it as a stand-in. And I learned from some of the best in the industry on that set. Uh, and I use that for my pro our projects. And then, I mean, at the end of the day, it's more, I think it's more satisfying because it's your heart and passion that was put into it versus when you're on big sets, it's everybody, there's a hundred people running around and all you're doing is really for me, like if I'm on the set, I'm just standing there and everyone else is doing the work and I'm just like, 
okay, when I'm in set, it's fine. But then after that, it's like, you're not really doing anything. And at the end of the day, you're like, huh, that was okay. <laughs> you know, yeah, not being the star, you can be virtually yeah. invisible on a giant set. <laughs> yeah. You're just a body. <laughs> right. Right. Um, so, and, and Justin, I really like how you put that, that being satisfying and you're involved in every aspect because I never really thought about that. You, you, you make that big film or big TV show and it's great. You have fun acting on it and being on set or whatever it is that you're doing. But then once you're done filming, it's like, okay, now you just have to wait for it to come to TV or be released or whatever the case is. And you're not doing anything, but how cool it is when you can say, that hey look at all the different parts that i did i mean i still have it's like we shot it but now i have to do all this and so when you present it to somebody you've had a hand in every single part of that production and i, I never that's that's that, I, I like that I, I like that response so that's, that's good yeah that's amazing <laughs> yeah because yeah. yeah, we even did our own editing too so when we went home Shella started doing the editing and all that, putting it together and all that stuff. So we never stopped. We were literally going from eight in the morning to like 10 at night sometimes. Right. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's it. And so your one of your um, first big films that won some awards, that I think was um, an action film. Isn't that, isn't that right? And, uh, yeah. Um, yes. Well, Repentance was nominated oh, no. for it was a yeah, it went to Action on Film Film Festival in Las Vegas. And we were so excited. We packed. We actually drove all the way there with all of our kids and everything. We drove. Yes, that's right. <laughs> and, that's cool. oh, uh, all the way from Rhode Island, huh? Yes. Yes. OK, <laughs> two kids. No. <laughs> uh, and it came, uh, it was nominated for best short film. I was nominated for uh, best lead in a short film. And we met with some really cool people and- Actually, we, runner up. Oh, I was runner up. Yeah, runner up, sorry. Runner up, that's right. Uh, and we uh, met some cool contacts when we were there. Uh, Billy McManera, we met there. And we keep in contact periodically and stuff like that. So. It was a very good experience and it was a fun film, which we learned what not to do with. And we, uh, I think when we think of TV and film so often, we are looking at all the glamorous uh, red carpet events, multi million dollar Hollywood A listers, and that's what everybody thinks that, oh, you're an actor, that's the way your life is. That, that I think that that tends to be what a lot of people I know I used to have that mindset myself. I used to think that, oh, I'll, you know, you you acted if you're an actor, you have it made and you, you and you you have just everything handed to you. But that's but that's not the way it is. And so and when it comes to film and TV, if you are an independent filmmaker, you have to do it all. I, I mean <laughs> Exactly. You don't. Yes. You don't yes. get. You don't get to like. Uh, and, and because you're usually working with a limited or no budget, and you're and you have to decide. Okay, I need to learn how to edit the film. I need to learn how to shoot the film. I need to learn how to do this and, the, and all the different aspects of film that the big name studios hire. They pay millions of dollars for other people to do it so that they don't have to and they have all those moving pieces so um so with independent film i understand that that's a great way to get started i mean some people look at it okay i'm going to get i'm going to make some content and i'm going to get into independent film and that's going to put my work out there and then i'm going to make it big and all this and then you know some people have that that idea but what what do you really appreciate about the most about working in an independent film? Um, independent, it's more, it's more satisfying because especially for us, we did everything. So it was, of course, it's a lot of work, but at the end of the day, it was a lot more satisfying too, because we knew this was our creation from get from start to finish. 
Uh, I did all the crew work. I did the cinematography on it. I did the lighting on it because I uh, learned a lot of experience because I did, uh, it's called Space Oddy. I did a whole run, like the whole month on it as a stand-in. And I learned from some of the best in the industry on that set. Uh, and I use that for my pro our projects. And then, I mean, at the end of the day, it's more, I think it's more satisfying because it's your heart and passion that was put into it versus when you're on big sets, it's everybody, there's a hundred people running around and all you're doing is really, for me, like if I'm on the set, I'm just standing there and everyone else is doing the work and I'm just like, okay, when I'm in set, it's fun. But then after that, it's like, you're not really doing anything. And at the end of the day, you're like, huh, that was okay. <laughs> you know, not being the star, you can be virtually yeah. invisible on a giant set. <laughs> Yeah, You're just a body, <laughs> right? Right. Um, so sh and and Justin, I really like how you put that that being satisfying and you're involved in every aspect because I never really thought about that. You 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 make that big film or big TV show and it's great, you have fun acting on it and being on set or whatever it is that you're doing, but then once you're done filming, it's like okay, now you just have to wait for it to come to TV or be released or whatever the case is, and you're not doing anything. But how cool it is when you can say that, hey, look at all the different parts that I did. I mean, I still have. It's like we shot it, but now I have to do all this. And so when you present it to somebody, you've had a hand in every single part of that production. And I, I never. That's that's. That, I, I like that. I, I like that response. So that's, that's good. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because yeah, we even did our own editing too. So when we went home, Shella started doing the editing and all that, putting together and all that stuff. So we never stopped. We were literally going from eight in the morning to like ten at night sometimes. Right. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's it. And so your one of your um first big films that won some awards that i think was uh, an action film isn't that isn't that right and uh, yeah. yeah um well repentance was nominated oh, no. for it was a yeah it went to action on film film festival in las vegas and we were so excited we packed we actually drove all the way there with all of our kids and everything we drove yes that's right <laughs> and, that's cool. Oh my uh, all the way from Rhode Island, huh? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Two kids. No. <laughs> uh, and it came, uh, it was nominated for best short film. I was nominated for uh, best lead in a short film. And we met with some really cool people. And hey, runner up. Oh, I was runner up. Yeah, runner up. Sorry. Runner up. That's right. Uh, and we uh, met some cool contacts when we were there. Uh, Billy McManera, we met there and we keep in contact periodically and stuff like that. So it was a very good experience and it was a fun film, which we learned what not to do with. <laughs> and we, yeah. we learned that was our first real big one when she was in school and we learned a lot we did wrong with that film but then yeah it was a good learning experience film i loved it don't shoot don't shoot an entire film in a day <laughs> <laughs> never gonna work out <laughs> yeah i i i can understand but but that's but that's the really great thing i mean what i mean what i hear you saying is that First of all, going to those film festivals, I know I've, I've, I've had the opportunity to go to a couple of film festivals and you really are able to meet some cool people, make some contacts that can. And that's why you, know, you, you were, although it might have been a little crazy to pack up your entire family and drive, drive but, but you guys like to travel. I know you said you like to travel and you're and so. So I guess that was good. But it was it was good that you were able to do that, but you were able to make some contacts. And that's always the great thing that I, I think some people don't realize that it's not always it's not always about whether you win or lose uh, when you go to these film festivals. It's about the people that you meet and the contacts that you mm -hmm. make. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. that's key in this industry. It's about the connections you make and how you keep those connections, because 
one day you'll meet them down the road and they'll be like, oh, you know, we should work together again or work together, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe you audition for them and them remembering you is the difference between them choosing you over somebody else. Yep. That's true. I've seen That's that true. happen before. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Well, and I love the fact that you use that film. Yeah. You said, okay, so you learn, it was a learning experience. You made some mistakes and things not to do with film, but it's good that you took, you, you were still putting something out there and you have to get in and do the work. I mean, I, I, you can have all the education in the world and be as prepared. You can be prepared for every possible situation, but nothing beats getting in and getting, having that experience of doing it. Absolutely. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And I, I made a vow a long time ago that we would never create anything that we didn't finish. And that film went largely unfinished for a long period of time because we just we needed some more stuff from the actors or we needed scenes to tie it up. And Justin and I went back and did all the legwork, replaced all the audio, built it from the ground up. And as long as it got done, that was the goal, you yeah. know, because we want it done also for the actors that have come on board. We know what it's like to be a part of projects that never see the light of day. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And that happens in this business so many times. I mean, the the I hear the heartbreaking stories of, well, we filmed this and, or, or, or the stories, oh man, the stories I hear so much, so many times from my friends is they filmed something and then their part got cut out and they didn't know about it until they're actually watching it. And they've invited all their family and friends and then their part got cut out. And uh. I, I hear that so many times. And so how great, how great, Shella, how great that you made that vow and you're sticking to it. So I commend you for that because that does not Thank always you. happen in this industry. And I think we need more people like that. It's like, it's like, even if it doesn't go the way you want it, at least put it out there because the people have worked hard and, mm -hmm. and to not do that. I, I, I never do understand why studios will buy something and just shelve them because they and then they never see the light of day i will never understand that i, I mean it just i know it's politics and there's a lot involved that i just don't get but but i um, agree it's <laughs> people's heart and souls on the line and yep yeah exactly. i think we need to place more value in that <laughs> so, yeah. yeah exactly um but i have been enjoying doubledate.com i've been watching that and um so what was your inspiration behind this i'm sure the pandemic had part of it based on what i read but but what was what gave you this idea to to write and then end up creating this series uh well at first it started with just we could use more comedy for our reels as actors you know to help us get more auditions for that kind of stuff. So we were just kind of spitballing scenes that could be like uh, comedic. You know, we both have been through improv, with the Bright Citizens Brigade and Second City. So we just kind of started talking, but then we kind of fell on, I think a point where we were just like ourselves, like how hard it is to make friends. And it's like, wouldn't that make a funny series? Like people who can't make friends. Cause that's like, how do you even make friends anymore? We can't even leave the house anymore. How are you going to make friends anymore? I mean, before it was hard to just in person approaching other people as adults. Shouldn't you have friends by now? <laughs> so we just, we just kind of thought, what if there was a, you know, all we see eHarmony commercials all the time. What if there was a match site for this? And it kind of just grew from there. We, we wrote like one, I think the initial scenes from uh, episode one, and it just kind of, Oh, but then they could go here. Oh, but then they could go here. Who are these? And then we wanted to discover who are these people? What do they do for a living? What's turning other people off about them so much? Yeah. And it was kind of like a, a journey of discovery. And it was really neat. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, it's, it's been enjoyable watching, I mean, watching this, uh, watching these episodes of uh, just, and, and I love the fact that, <sighs> most i shouldn't say most that's probably not the best thing. i'll say a lot of independent film that i watch or have seen is really edgy now i'm not saying that, that you don't have an edge in in what i've seen but it's not it's because it's comedy 
you don't have some of the edginess that I see in some independent projects. And, and not, that, not that that's horrible. I'm not saying, I mean, I think you have to have everything, but, but I appreciate right. the fact that it's something that's relatable. I guess that's, that's, that's probably what I'm going for. I don't mind the edginess, but if it's relatable and like, I can actually see myself or other couples that I know going through, like, I, like I'll, I can think of, oh, that couple reminds me of so-and-so, or that reminds me that that person reminds me of so-and-so. And that's what I really enjoy about doubledate.com is that you can see people, you've captured different personalities on screen and, and the typical person can relate to them. Yes. So did, did you... Uh -huh. Did, did you base any of these, not, not that you have to give names, but did, did you draw inspiration from real life as you, I mean, of course, I know your two characters, you probably did. I would say your two characters are probably somewhat similar to you, you know, possibly, but as far as the others that were involved, did you draw inspiration from, from people that you have known in your life? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, when you're delving into characters, the first place you look is your own life. And then you just try, especially in comedy, to exaggerate uh, the things about them that would be comedic. You know, it's usually the things that either annoy you or drive you up a wall or where you end up button heads with somebody. But then you take it into a whole new corner and hash it out and then add other elements and mesh them all together. And a, a big part of it was actually meeting the people that we ended up casting. Uh, you know, we had little ideas for when we cast them and Justin was going, he did all the casting through them, but then you could see who they could become as well during their auditions, which was really awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Justin, you, you married well, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I know you know that but it's like it's like man it's like you got you got, you got a smart you got a smart one there she's she's pretty and smart i mean my goodness yeah you did well lucky. yes yes i got lucky <laughs> i mean i know she i know she did well too but it's just but it's you know fighting you i mean you you both what what I sense from both of you is that you work really well together, which that doesn't always happen with couples either. I'm not saying you never have challenges because you're two people. Yeah, there's going to be challenges here and there, but you two seem to work really well together. Like you're, you're very evenly matched, like what Justin's strengths and Shella's strengths you're, you have you're well matched, I guess, is what is what is what I'm sensing. Um, definitely. He's got what I'm missing and I've yeah. got what he could use more of. Yeah, we definitely exactly. could. Yep. That's good. That's I good. can definitely see that, yeah. Yeah. Right. And so so and that's and that's a real joy to see. So what has been the response? I I, I know that doubledate.com has been out there, has has been getting some response. What has been the response uh, from from people, film festivals, whatever the case is for this? Uh, we're still waiting on film festivals. Okay. Uh, we just submitted, so it takes a little bit to yeah. hear back sometimes because they go through the whole run. They have early bird deadlines and all that type of okay. stuff, so you have to do the whole waiting game. Uh, but the response has been good uh, with views mm -hmm. and everything. We're hoping to get our subscribers up a little bit more, but not many people stay subscribed, uh, like signed into YouTube I've, of what I'm understanding, yeah. but cool. viewing wise and likes and everything and like interactions, we've been, we've gotten quite a bit with, and we're very pleased with that. Uh, we're looking to build up our channel because with what we did with the production, because we're, we're actually saying after members. So we had to do it under a certain uh, contract. Right. We can only have it on YouTube or festivals, basically. Right. And that's why we're pushing to like build up our channel with it because we think it is a good story. We actually relate to it. I mean, yeah, some of the topics are very embellished yeah. in, a, in yeah. ways to, because it is comedy. Yeah. But, I mean, we have kids. It is really hard to find friends, especially with kids because you have friends that aren't with kid have kids or single friends still mm -hmm. they're like you know so i mean i think it is a very important topic that many don't feel like exists but it does for middle-aged people that want to have friends and we don't want to do the bar scene anymore you know like <laughs> yeah. we're, 
Right. I don't do that. You know, <laughs> so like, how do you? Like, yeah. you know, so. Yeah. Well, and I think that's what makes it so relatable. What you were saying there, Justin, is why I find it so relatable because it's not, um, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not married, but I have a child. And so, so I can even still relate to it because I was married. So I, I mean, I, I can relate to it, but I'm not going out and looking for people in bars and, and, just, and, and the situations are relatable. So I, I really do. That's that, that, that all makes sense. That that's one of the reasons that I've really enjoyed it. And it sounds like people are enjoying it. Um, soul and section, I mean, soul injection studios. That's the name of your company. Was there, is there a reason why, why you, for that name? Oh, yeah. So, you know, we sat around pitching ideas at each other for a little while because we, we wanted something to, that spoke for us, you know, uh, if it's going to be the name of what we're doing, we want it to kind of be perceived in a certain way. And it was basically that we're injecting your soul with our creativity, with the entertainment, with all the work that we're doing, you know, we want it to be like good vibes, positivity, and it's uh, work that we want to say would rejuvenate you, bring you back to life, give you a laugh. Um, so we wanted something to represent that. And I'm not even sure how we ended up landing there, but it just things to do with the soul have always been a certain part of me. And I think how, like, how would, what are we doing with our art? We're, we're giving it to you in a certain way. So I think we just came upon, we're injecting you with uh, these cool vibes that you're going to leave after you see our stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, 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 and, and I, I, I know you've succeeded at least doubledate.com. I would say you've succeeded in that since that's, since I'm most familiar with that. I can say definitely you see that. Um, I certainly left feeling very positive and having fun. And, and it was really also just a nice break because so often um, maybe it gave my soul a break. You injected it with positive vibes and I, and it gave me a little bit of a break and I was able to smile and, and not feel like, like the world was so bad and, yeah, and yeah. all the politics and all the garbage that you are bombarded with every day. You'd think that the, that the world is, um, ending, you know, like it's yeah. ending, like it's end, like, like it's ending or it's already ended and life is just horrible and there's nothing good. And then mm -hmm. you turn on your project and you can smile and laugh and enjoy it and feel positive. So, so I, I like that whole, whole idea of soul injection. That, that, <laughs> that, 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 that's, that's a really, it's a, it's a neat thing. Um, so in creating a production company, um, what was, what was that? what was that like founding and creating your own production company was that was that is that has that been a i'm sure it's been a challenging undertaking yeah i think it's something we just kind of fell into yeah we fell into <laughs> uh yeah basically uh, kind of fell into it because we learned that making your own content is important right and through all the classes and all that type you know okay. things that you go through while you're an actor always push make your own content make your own content we'll fi eventually find you we'll eventually see it type of thing and then we were like well we need to put it under something so why don't we do this so then she started doing projects in school and we're like oh we need something for this so like i can never do anything small anyway it yeah. starts out small. Uh, my professor's like we only want like two three minutes of video here you know don't go nuts and here i am and I think repentance ended up being 17 minutes because okay. I just yeah. couldn't control myself. Yeah. I, I understand. Shella, I'm, I'm, I'm the same way. I can't do anything halfway. So I, I, I understand completely. As, yes. <laughs> I'm in school and they're saying, oh yeah, write a five page paper. I mean, I'm having to edit it down because it's usually I've, I've written a seven or eight page paper. It's like, okay. Always. <laughs> Yeah, so so I understand that. Well, that, 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 that's good. It's I I'm I mean I'm finding that I'm connecting with both of you on a on a much deeper level now as we're getting to talk, and that's it's so great to have this conversation. Um, so, what projects are you looking at? Of course, I know DoubleDate.com. You submitted to film festivals, and I know how that goes. I'm I'm 
I'm working for an actor who has also been submitting his first short film to festivals. And so, so I've been actually going through that process and learning a lot more. Um, and so I have a lot of appreciation for that. Um, so I know you're doing that, but what other projects, are there any other projects, any other things that you were, your that you can mention that you're working on now? Um, <laughs> well, I would say we're always cooking up something, you know, a potential second season to double date should be on the horizon. Uh, we are also trying to build our channel, as you said, but we also want to dive into like some kid friendly media. So um, we have a production coming up. We're still trying to find the right contract for it, but um, it's it's going to be like a world that we built. Like back in the old days, they would build sets. We just recently built a set, a miniature set, so that we could do kind of like a little fantasy world of our own. Uh, it's going to be featuring gnomes. I recently got into a gnome obsession. There's gnomes everywhere. Every holiday, there's yeah. gnomes. There, so. uh, we made everything ourselves. We went straight to the dollar store, crafted up, got that glue gun out, and uh, I'm really excited for people to see that. <laughs> because yes. of how much effort we put into it. That would be the next thing we are immediately working on. And then, uh, of course, we've always got like a pile of scripts oh, ready yes. to go, yeah. ready to pitch, ready for bigger budgets. <laughs> right. Know. Oh my goodness. So that sounds like loads of fun. Gnomes. Well, gnomes is the, that's the thing. That's isn't that like the going thing now? I know my my daughter went, went over Christmas was creating for her Etsy shop all sorts of gnomes and she was really getting into yeah. the gnome thing. So I think I think that's I think you I think that's the cool trend right now, anyway, at least in some circles. Um she she she, she, she she's 18, so she's she so so yeah, she, she she usually knows what's going on, what's trendy. So <laughs> I realize, I realize she's, yeah. She's, so yeah. So no, that sounds great. My goodness, you guys are so industrious. I love the fact that and and I and I know that most people, well, I know that a lot of my friends that I talk to who are in film and TV, they're often industrious and they're often doing things, but it's just really amazing to hear you also like you're creating your own sets and you have all these great ideas and 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 you're thinking outside the box which i know independent filmmakers have to do that any in any way but you really are and you're not just sitting around waiting for it to happen you are doing something and you're you're working on accomplishing those goals and dreams and i, and I love that i'm i'm so i'm so i think that's that's what i love to I love to talk with people who are actually doing something and not and and not just waiting for life to happen. So, yes, you. there's a will, there's a way, and you've just always got to be doing something because all this time is passing no matter what. So if you're not working on something, yeah. <laughs> you could be. Yeah, exactly. And and really, the pandemic I think has opened up. It, it's as negative as that and all the challenges and all the difficulties that have arisen as a result there have been some positives even for film and tv like like you guys have um i i think it's great you were able to create doubledays.com during the pandemic and film it remotely and and um so so well done on that you guys are you guys are amazing i i don't know if anybody's ever told you that Thank i you. hope they have i hope they have but you probably you never did. tired of hearing it <laughs> but you both are making you, blush. <laughs> well you <laughs> i agree you are a dynamic duo there is no doubt about that and um yeah. so I know that we have we do have a few people here um, in our virtual audience, and I have no doubt that there might be some questions that people want to ask. Okay. Hello. Hi. Hi. How's it going? <laughs> Very nice to meet you both. Um, at, first, for uh, Justin, one of my favorite uh, series that was on TV was the uh, Mysteries of the Museum, and I got to see you play. Um, uh, 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 Warren Witter, Witter, is that you say? Witchery. Uh, Warren yeah, Witchery, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, how did you get that part? How did you find out about it? And, um, and oh, go ahead, sorry. And, well, and the, and the follow up is, is, is that did you actually get to go to the site or did you, is it all studio done? Uh, well, first, how I got it was. At that time, I wasn't SAG. Uh, those projects aren't usually SAG-AFTRA. 
And I did a lot of that on my own, finding that work. And even though I'm in Rhode Island, I will do anything for roles. Like we're very passionate about this. So I drive to New York for it. And sadly, no, it, w- it was a built set, basically. It's called the, the Art Factory in uh, New Jersey, it was. Technically, it was New Jersey where I filmed that. I forgot. Uh, but a lot of the set was based in that little area. And that, honestly, by far is probably very good footage that I got and on my own. So, yeah. That was very good. You were very, very good. I, I enjoyed oh, that. Appreciate it. <laughs> that, so. Well, thank you. <laughs> and then, um, Shella, uh, you're a mom, a student, and it's not easy. Oh, how, not at all. How yeah. do you manage that? Be, because my grandson um, is going to the University of Miami, and he has a girlfriend, and she is in the film uh, uh, production right now in, in studying that and they're always running for that sunlight that's going down that they got to get that can't last shot or reshoot it or something yeah. or my daughter-in-law gets a phone call the house that they were going to rent fell through and they have to you know can we use your living room to set up the scene <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> while I was while I was there we were quickly cleaning the house to set up a a scene because the camera crews were coming over the next day. Yeah. How do you manage? I mean, do you have family support or are you able just to drop and run or? Um, well, that's kind of exactly how you do it. How they said, like, can we do this? If you know somebody, you reach out to anybody that has your back or that you trust. I wouldn't say we have a ton of family support. We're actually pretty much on an island out here. We do have uh, my great aunt, who's always been a huge supporter of my creative endeavors, and she got me like my first headshots and acting classes way back when. And that's actually her fine uh, house that we're hanging out in now because she's watching our son. And okay. this is also the set of DoubleDate.com, Lindsay and Carter's wow. apartment. So we did get very lucky there. Uh, sh- she's always been very helpful in that aspect. But um, b- before the pandemic, like we had to actually show up in New York or Boston for these physical auditions. And it would always be all of us together, jam-packed in the car multiple times a week. Uh, Like I'd be in the car waiting with the baby while he's running in or vice versa for the audition. Uh, The kids are always very much close by and then we'll like treat them to Times Square if it's New York. Uh, I remember uh, Asher just hated the car seat when he was a baby, our youngest. And we'd have to like pull over sometimes for hours at a time, get him out of his car seat, calm him down. Uh, it's, it's been hard. It's been hard every step of the way. It's just a matter of perseverance and mm-hmm. how bad you want it while still being able to, you know, be adequate in your studies or as a parent, it's trying to find that balance. It's, mm-hmm. you're never going to be like completely balanced out. It's just always trying, always thinking, how can I make this work? And that's kind of how we did it. We, you know, we, when we were filming Double Bait, we needed sets. We had no money. And besides uh, the household and people using their own households on Zoom, we put out a lot of feelers and got turned down a bunch of times. Most people want a lot of money for you to use their things. Mm-hmm. But we found uh, an ice cream shop across, uh, around the corner from our house who was chill and fine with it. And then I used uh, my school too, reached out to my professor and he got us able to use the school. And uh, my aunt's been the sole babysitter the whole time. So and, very and lucky. For both of you, I love your so- slogan, Dare to Dream. I did, I, that <laughs> is really awesome. You, you work together, you have dreams together, but do you each have a separate dream that you want to try to accomplish? Um, actually, this is really our heart and soul thing, like performing, acting, uh, traveling, like we love all that stuff. And this is kind of, we went into this understanding, like acting and doing the film industry is kind of what we want both. Uh, Cause we did have lives before this that didn't consist of it a hundred percent. And that's just not very supportive because being an actor or filmmaker not is a special quality you need in order to, you know, deal with it. So your other has to kind of understand the ups and definitely the lows because sometimes there's more lows and ups, but when the ups are good, they're really good and 
this is kind of it. Your other half isn't in it. It's it's probably next to impossible because they just don't understand what's driving you to keep doing something you keep falling on your face at. Um, and you're already getting pulled by everybody else, even people with the best intentions, you know, your, your friends, your family, that it's a one in a million shot. You shouldn't like get it, you know, be realistic. I mean, I've been hearing that my whole life. So if that one person can be your partner that does believe and you always believe, I think that's probably really all you do need at that point. Um, as far as dreams, I wouldn't say we have separate dreams. I think they're always somewhat in line, like, you know, the action on film festival was very much based around martial arts too. And we've always had an interest in that. So we started taking martial arts together when we got home. Um, he writes his own things. I write my own things, but somewhere yeah. in there, there's always some kind of something the other can do for that project. Yeah. I'm trying to think, I would like to say that there's, <laughs> but I don't think there is. I don't know. Do you want to come to Mars with me someday? <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. I mean, we have other space travels. Definitely. We have other desires, but this is like our ultimate goal. Yeah. So, I don't well, think... I'm, at, I'm at the age where I'm trying to get those dreams in before. And recently, one of my dreams was to be able to jump out of a plane. And I skydived. And uh, so. Yes. Another dream is to be an ex extra in the background, even if I'm pushing a shopping cart and I'll do it for free. So if you ever need somebody, <laughs> get on the road, she'll give you my number and I'll <laughs> drive to New Jersey. I'm up in Buffalo. I'll drive to, to oh, uh, yeah. Rhode Island or to, to come along for your dream too. Wow. And that, so, but yeah, so it, it, it is fun. Um, well, it's hard to write. For, to yeah. just pick up and write. You got a family um, life. It's, you know. I would say the hardest part is to get it on the paper because the writing is always happening. It's all up here. I have yes. probably a handful of scenes that are actually written down for each other. In-depth films going on up here 24-7. I'm just talking to all these people that don't exist in my head because <laughs> made them up um, curating them constantly and they're throwing wisecracks back at me and I actually live it all the time so the, you're right the hard part is finding the time to get it out on the paper <laughs> but to, to some extent it's all there and all I'm looking for is that little corner of time to get some down so slowly that's why I say slowly very slowly they, they come out and get on the paper <laughs> Very good. Well, I thank you for answering my questions and I wish you all the well. I know it's not an easy life. I see my grandson and his girlfriend going through through it and fundraising and, you yeah. know, yeah. sending boxes of any craft goods or anything I have to send down to them to help them out. And, you know, good luck for your, your future. And no, thank you so thank much. Thank you. We appreciate it. It was great talking. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Pa Paula is a good one. She, she is. I'm, I'm so grateful to, for her. And, and that was, that was great questions, Paula. Great, great questions. Yes. Um, um, so as we start to wrap things up, um, I know that film and TV has changed even even over the past few years, I mean, the pandemic, I think, has changed things, uh, has really changed the way even casting happens and filming happens, and so much has changed. Um, but what would be your, and, and I know I know this probably is a question that you might get asked a lot, but if, you, if there is someone who is listening to this podcast, watching this podcast, and they think, well, I want to go after, they might be a young person, they might be somebody, an older, you know, even an older person starting out, and they might want to pursue that dream of being involved in the arts, being involved in film and television. Maybe they just, they're they not sure if they should go after it. Um, what would be your advice to anyone who's seriously starting to consider a career in film and TV? Um, my one advice would be for sure is to do background work for a day and see if that's really what you want. Because honestly, doing background work will tell you exactly what behind being on set is like, what the life of an actor or performer is like. 
now you also can learn if you want to be part of the crew too, because when I'm on set, I'm on, I'm one of the people that will actually watch everything that's going on and because I want to make my own stuff. So I learn from what the grips are doing, lighting, cinematography and all that. But now if you just go on there and you just want to like act, uh, background, I can tell you right now, will definitely tell you if you want to do what they do and make sure you get on the set that you want to, like, if you want to be a TV actor, do a TV background. And if you want to do film, because those are two different worlds. Uh, same with like theater, theater is a whole different world. Like I've done theater. That is like, a, you have to be a, a certain person to do theater because the, the long schedules and the, the, you know, rehearsals and stuff. So figure out if you want to do it, if after you do one day of that stuff and you are like, Oh, this is, I actually want it. Cause you'll know you'll get hungry for it and you'll want to keep doing it. And then I would go to classes. If you're young, schooling would be the key, going to college for it or doing some kind of specialty school. Uh, if you're older, honestly, doing background work and doing independent films, getting footage, uh, as much footage as you can and train. That's pretty much the only way you can do it. And then hopefully you'll either get seen, you can pitch yourself to agents. But right now during the pandemic, it's a lot harder because a lot of them have, they're really tight with their their roster because there's not enough work for everyone, especially SAG actors. So you have to be very careful. And then, you know, don't jail or any SAG unless you're hundred percent ready and you're able to do so. Yeah. And I would just say, once you've decided that this is what you're going to do, um, it was a game changer when I, when I learned editing, when I learned how to do everything we can. So many people out there, we even talk to actors still today, have trouble finding their readers, have troubles with self-tapes. you got to get amazing with self-tapes. So you've got to be your own resource for that. And like, we don't even bat our eyes like that. It's like easy, you know, done. Like, I remember thinking before then, how will I ever get that done if it were just me? And I was in this and I didn't have a camera, but now you can even use your phones to shoot scenes, write yourself a scene, make yourself a reel. And if you learn editing, you can do all that by yourself. And then you can start showing that stuff to casting directors because as hard as it is to get booked in anything, it is a challenge to get called in for auditions. Like once you start auditioning, that's when you can say you're actually doing something right. Once you've noticed that casting directors know you, they're calling you in. You're auditioning for something that really could be a speaking role in TV and film. Everybody always talks about how to treat an audition, how to handle an audition, but you don't just get those auditions. So what are you doing before you're getting those auditions? You've got to do everything in your power to get them. Well, I want to tell you both, and I'm going to be quite honest here. I have asked this question to many actors many people involved in film and TV over the past several years. By far, the advice you both gave, I feel is the strongest advice I've ever heard. And I'm not even just making that up. I don't know, it's just the way you put it, the, 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 the experience that you put behind it and the way you said it was, it was so direct that, uh, so I just wanna thank you because that, this is, I will not forget that advice. I will probably, I will definitely not, not probably, I will definitely take that. Uh, I, I have a tendency in my interviews when there's something that's a really great thing that somebody has said, I always give credit, I always give credit back to you. If it's, if it's, I'll, I'll say, you know, I'll get, I'll give credit back <laughs> if, if it seems appropriate, but I will, but I won't, I won't take the credit for it. But, um, you guys gave fantastic advice. I just want to thank you. That was that 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 for me was probably the the high one of the high points of 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 all my interviews so far. Honestly, that was amazing. Thank you. I'm so glad to hear that because it is straight from the heart. We know what it's yeah. like. We've yeah, been really. in the trenches. We're still somewhere in the trenches, yeah. and we love actors. We understand their journeys and their pains and. You know, anything to help them and anything to say, don't give up. You know, if you love this, don't give up. <laughs> exactly. You can do it. You just got to fight for it. Exactly. So I know you guys are all wrapped. You know, you're, you're a family. You've got two little ones. And so, of course, film, film, that's, that's your, that's your world. That's your focus. But I know that you said that you did some other things first, traveling and getting out and 
biking and things like that. Um, so what is your, what is your next family adventure? To, do you have, do you guys have a family adventure that you're looking towards, towards in the near future? You know, it's the funny part is about all these adventures, they happen, but they're so whimsical and sporadic. They're actually usually not planned. Like we uh, were so sick of the pandemic. We bought like Hershey Park tickets in Pennsylvania. Like I've never been there. There's a little road trip in there. Let's go there. And then all of a sudden we got accepted to this film festival and it's like, or we could go here. <laughs> and then suddenly we're driving across country. That, uh, we discovered the American Dreams Mall the last time we were down that way. And Actually, we're, I think we're going to Diggerland. It's like all the construction work, and they've made rides out of it. And then on our way back, we bumped into the American Dreams Mall and ended up going to Nickelodeon Universe with the kids. Like, yeah. um, it's very much uh, an action-packed adventure for us because <laughs> we never know exactly what's going to happen. Like, we had all these plans on our road trip the first time getting to Vegas, and we ended up breaking down in bum nowhere, Utah and having to buy a new car just to get out and get to Vegas. <laughs> yeah. Wow. You guys really, you, 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 it sounds like you guys could create, create a movie based on your family adventures. For sure. Yeah, we probably could. <laughs> Definitely. Well, that one. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. I can see that being something. Wow. You, okay. Well, well, I'm glad I asked them because I know sometimes people will plan it all out, but it sounds like you guys just, that it just, it just happens and you're, and you never know what's going to happen. And, and that's great. There's, there's, I have learned the joy of spontaneity. I'm one who prefers it all structured, but I have learned over the past couple of years, especially to, to not be as structured and, um, and, and actually you guys wouldn't be here on this podcast, if I didn't, if I hadn't learned to be somewhat less structured, because it used to be that my interviews were very planned out. And now we just kind of go with the flow. And I listen to the conversation nice. and we really, and we really had, I, I, I have thoroughly enjoyed the conversation with you two. You two have been amazing. So much fun getting to act, getting to see your heart, your heart. You guys have shared from your heart so much and i appreciate that it goes right along with my podcast media from the heart look you guys are sharing yep. from your heart it's like that's amazing so that. so i just am so glad that i had the opportunity to bring you both on i'm learning the whole editing thing you know you mentioned editing yes nice. I've, been, I've been learning the editing thing too <laughs> It comes, it comes in handy. It comes in handy. Yes, it does. Right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I agree with you on that. I'm not filming TV, but I'm, I've, I've learned over the past couple of years to do some things that I never thought I'd be doing. So, so I, I, I hear that. So, Maybe. all right. Um, well, if either, if, if, and, and Paula and Amy, if you want to unmute and, and thank them, you, you know, you, you can, you can do that as we wrap things up here. Um, but just thank you both. I thank, thank you. you. Thank you for being part of this. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for listening. We appreciate it. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. And tell all your friends, your family, everyone, subscribe to Soul Injection Studios on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I know I'm subscribed. I know I'm subscribed because I, I, awesome. I did that. Thank you. And and, thank you. and I will continue to follow your journey. So and I, and I'll be sure when I post this, I'll have all your links and everything. I'm always really good about oh, it. Oh, thank you. Know, you. So. Appreciate so it. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, everybody have a great weekend and I will, I will and thank you again. I'll talk to you guys later. All right. Thank you. Bye. Take care, everybody. Right. Take okay, care. Bye. 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 Thank you. I think you understand by now why I call Justin and Shayla a dynamic duo. Soul Injection Studios, I am so totally impressed with what these two are doing the content that they are creating, the way that they are so authentic. They're continuing to learn. They're continuing to create. And they live in Rhode Island. I mean, go figure that out. I, they don't live in LA. They don't live in Canada. They don't live in some of these big places where you think film and TV is happening. And yet look at what they are doing. And they're just so gracious and kind and loving and caring. I mean, could you ask for any two better people to headline a project, to be your producers, directors, writers, actors? Well, 
I hope that all of you will check out their project. DoubleDate.com is a hoot. It's free to go check out on YouTube. I'll be sure to have that in the description. So please take a look at it. I think you'll really enjoy it. I'm excited to see this new content coming our way soon from them. If you're listening to this, which of course you're listening to it or you're watching it. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, you'd please rate, review. I'd so appreciate that. It helps me to get even more content out there. If you're on YouTube and you're watching this, please hit the thumbs up, subscribe. I'd love that. You guys are making such a difference. Please join the Facebook group. I'd love to have you stop on by for another podcast episode that'll be coming soon in the future. You never know who I might be interviewing next. So I invite you. Regardless, thank you for being here and supporting me. Let me know what you think. And I look forward to seeing you in another episode of Media from the Heart soon. God bless.